Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother and Dad. Love Ruth, John, Mark, Pamela, Patricia, and Peter. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Parents, 1960, Part 123. This is, this is based on the first part of the original publication, Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC, number 51, published on October 3rd, 2000. And a letter from the editor of the SFMC, yours truly, Peter J. Ray. Hi, everybody. To quote Jackie Gleason, and away we go. Here are some of this issue's highlights. Peter's birth and the move to 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard in Rocky River. The children just love the park. Peter has his daddy's good disposition and sense of humor. Mark is really, really an insect fiend this summer. We got him a new butterfly net. John is so good and tries so hard to do everything to make us happy. Enjoy, everybody. Room 676B Cleveland Clinic, East 93rd and Euclid, Cleveland, Ohio. May 16th, 1960. Dear Mother and Dad, You can imagine how very happy and grateful we are for Peter John's arrival on May 11th. Everything went just fine and I feel better than I have with any of the others and had the easiest delivery of any. I last wrote of my false start here and dazed rest. Nature or the good Lord... Dr. Taylor and John seem to have contrived a plan to get a good rest for me before the baby came. Many times since I've been, I've been sick, I've felt so weak, I thought I couldn't deliver the baby, and I guess that was about the way it was. Monday at home again, I got a few more things accomplished, washing drawers and the stove. I went to bed, and at 1 a.m. the amniotic bag burst, so I leaked all night. The doctor wanted me to come in in the morning, so we straightened around, and a neighbor, Ann Whites, took Patty, and another, Rita, took Pam for lunch and dancing, and Ann Whites also had Mark and Patty for supper. I'd planned to go to a coffee with all the neighbors, so when we had to leave for the hospital, they all said they'd help with the kitties. When we got here, the doctor wanted me into the hospital again because of danger of infection to the baby and to me since the waters had burst. They were thinking of inducing it, but I began labor contractions slowly, in bed all day. By 11 o'clock p.m., John and the doctor had given up and just gone to bed at midnight when I start progressing. So we phoned them and they came back. I had another caudal, but it didn't work, so he gave me a spinal too, and of, and of course everything was fine. The baby delivered beautifully. John and I both watched, and John told his mother it was the closest to having the baby himself. It was only a little more than an hour. John and the doctor got back to the hospital. The baby came about 2.33 a.m., but more than 24 hours after my waters had burst. He's got black hair and big hands and feet and is not a fat baby, but mostly bone, although his face is fat and he's well covered, but not fat. I was glad he wasn't any bigger. John heard it pop or crack when the doctor pulled his head over my coccyx bone in the birth canal. They gave me a shot for infection, just to be careful. I didn't hemorrhage after this baby either and am in I'm in much better shape, not bleeding as much, and my stomach is in good shape. So I had an extra two days in bed before the baby, was up a few hours after he was born, and will be here seven days, so I should be in, in shape. John's mother is at home with the children, so all is fine. John got a babysitter part of the first day so he could visit me. John sent me 24 or two dozen gorgeous talisman roses, my favorite, yellow roses with orange outside petals. They're opening into full bloom today and certainly heavenly. It's very romantic of him, for one of the first corsages he sent me was Easter 11 years ago. 
And it was talisman roses. I do think they're gorgeous. John's mother sent a lovely arrangement of white lilacs with evergreen and, and a pink bow, and, and Dick and Kent sent a china cradle with a beautiful arrangement of white snapdragons, purple iris, yellow mums, and pink roses, and a rattle attached. So I have a lovely window sill and a nice view. I'm alone at the end of the hall, so it's quiet. John came for dinner tonight, and we took our trays out onto the lounge to eat. I just went out again and had toast and chocolate milk. I'd only gained 16 pounds during the pregnancy, weighed 134 pounds. I weighed 132 when I was 21 and went to Florida. So I'm in good shape again. I'm nursing Peter John. I'll probably stay until Wednesday or Thursday. Our pink and white dogwood tree is blooming at the new house. Wish we were there. John's dad is going to come Sunday and mow the lawn there. John is going to have an open house again. I feel so lucky to have two boys and two girls. Now just two more. Love, Ruth. P.S. They have to give the flu preventive shots before you get the flu. Friday, May 13, 1960. Pamela is really quite a character. Last night on the telephone, she asked, I suppose he has short hair. I agreed, and she said, Well, if you think it's a boy, you'd better check and see if he has a peck or two. Some of us girls were talking about it, and you can't just tell if it's a boy because it's got short hair, but it has to have a peck or two. Did you check? I assured her. As a matter of fact, as soon as he was born... Peter cried all by himself without being spanked. Dr. Taylor asked if we noticed that. Then he urinated, and then they put him on my stomach and cut and tied the cord right while he was there. And then Dr. Taylor circumcised him right on my stomach with sort of large nail clippers. So he's all taken care of. John is coming this afternoon. John and Mark are going to an Indian guide camp tonight. Cooking and eating outdoors also tomorrow. Mark is so thrilled to be going to a man's affair with his dad. I guess he doesn't like to be surrounded by women. Last night I asked if he was happy about having a brother, and he said, Yes, but I sure hope he grows up fast and gets into kindergarten so I can play with him. So I think we'll have to start taking a fatherless boy through the Protestant big brothers so he has someone more his own age. When we get moved and organized. John's mother says Pamela is such an interesting child, really keeping her grandma informed. Love, Ruth. 602 Huntmere Drive, Bay Village, Ohio, May 16, 1960. Dear Mother and Dad, Everything is still going fine. I'll probably be busy when I get home, so thought I'd better write while I have the chance. It's so nice to have breakfast in bed and someone else do the dishes and make the bed. I told the nurse they make it so nice that I'll have to have another baby to come back. She said, that's our policy. This morning there are five student nurses plus the regular ones and only 11 patients. (coughs) So, excuse me, so lots of care. One nurse said she felt like getting into bed herself. I picked a good time. Last Sunday there were 21 babies and the weekend before 26, so I'm glad I waited. John is coming for dinner tonight. He had an offer on the house Saturday. Two older women and a son in his 20s. They offered $16,000 without hesitation. We're asking $17,900, but we'll go down if they'll come up, but we'd like to get (coughs) $1,700. or more. John's mother pointed out how much competition we have with 12 houses on the street up for sale. Nick and Joan were over yesterday to see Peter, John, Peter, John, and me. Joan just phoned to say how proud I should be of our new son. It was open house here yesterday, so lots of people through, and Dr. Taylor stopped to talk to Joan, too. Dr. Lameth was asking about Michael this morning. He delivered him. He said a lot of prayers had been asked for that baby. 
He said that had been quite an experience for him, for them all. Dr. Lameth is only in his 30s, but prematurely gray. He takes this very seriously, and being a doctor is certainly a big responsibility. John's mother is still very bitter toward the Cleveland Clinic, but we feel we've we've had good care. Tuesday. The folks were up last night. Mark has been sick with an earache, and John was up several hours in the night with him. John is coming for dinner again tonight. Today, Dr. Taylor said I could stay in until the weekend, so I will stay here a few days extra. I'm enjoying it. The auxiliary is following me here, though, and I've had to make, a few, make phone calls, and I've been called. I'm glad the year will soon see a new president of the auxiliary. Love, Ruth. 602 Huntmere Drive, Bay Village, Ohio, June 21st, 1960. Dear folks, John stopped by the house tonight on the way home and discovered Pamela's package, so she was pleased to get it. Since she has the measles, anything new to keep her occupied is welcome, since she shouldn't read, color, or watch TV. Bud may have told you since we phoned him to postpone his visit until next weekend. Patty and Mark may come down with them in any day. Our moving date is set for July 8th. I didn't want to move until the children were out of school. They are now and got very good report cards. Pam got B's and A's. Mark also got B's and A's. I also wanted to wait until I could go up and down stairs about two months. I thought it was very good of John's mother to volunteer to take one week of their vacation and come. Not many grandparents do that. However, I have been very tired this time. I go to the doctor Thursday. Dr. Nitsch was out and gave the other children shots of gamma globulin to give them lighter cases, and Pam was on elosin. She had a high fever and threw up a couple days and missed her birthday party and recital. John is over mowing the lawn now. He sanded the kitchen set, getting ready to paint it. It's white wrought iron with a glass top. The chairs have yellow seats. We have to find a dining set. I am enclosing some snaps. Would still like those slides back. You can keep any of the house you want, but the others, I don't have duplicates. Mark any you want, and I'll get them done. I must say good night. Love, Ruth. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, July 14th, 1960. Dear folks, I'm so sorry to hear of all Doris's troubles and do hope she's better. I hope that you didn't get it. It's really hard on anyone and you are so sensitive to it. Do take care. I hope that you have a good vacation. Chris Field writes that Pat and her family are down east. Wonder if they'll get a chance to come visit us. Good, it was good to see Bud, but he seemed to feel too rushed. He should have seen us since he's been here. Patty came down with the measles right after he left. Mark was very sick with the measles in spite of the shot, had a cough. Now we may get German measles as Pam was exposed the night before we moved. The children just love Rocky River Park, but I have really been on the move. John, too, says he's never worked harder in his life. Peter weighs 12 pounds, 6 ounces now, and is so very good. Been laughing out loud for a couple of weeks. He has his daddy's good good disposition and sense of humor. 1 o'clock a.m., and I'm exhausted, so good night. Do take care. Love, Ruth, John, Mark, Pam, Patty, Ann, and Peter, John. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, August 29th, 1960. Dear folks, we arrived back safe and sound from Maine, full of lobster, of course. We had it baked, stuffed in rolls and salad, and finally put the live ones in and boiled them at the camp and really got our fill. We saw lots of very picturesque scenery, of course, so many old houses. Harold and Marge Freilich took us to a friend of theirs who had restored one. We never saw so many shutters in all our life. Of the original old houses and full of antiques. Many interesting old English names. 
and the rock-bound coast of Maine is really rocky. Mark had a ball with all the shells, clams, and bugs. He's really an insect fiend this summer. We got him a new butterfly net. Even the little neighbor twins got butterfly nets for their eighth birthday, so he spread the interest. One could really spend a lot of time traveling around New England. Of course, we went through quite a few states. We took a lot, lots of movies, too. It took us 17 hours driving each way, two days each way. There are turnpikes all the way there, but we took the scenic route home. We got your card on your trip. It's Lakeside this weekend, the Zook family reunion, and then back to school for Mark and Pamela. I hate to see the summer end. It's gone so quickly. The article about loneliness by Faith Baldwin didn't hit me. I guess I'm just too busy and too many little ones needs to attend to at the moment. It's such a good time of life. If only we could borrow some of the time from other days. John, <clears throat> John learned to water ski and Pamela can float on her back in the water. Even Patty yesterday was on the verge of floating on her back. I hope you can visit us whenever you feel you can make it. If you'd prefer to come soon, just let us know. You'd really enjoy Peter. He seems so alert and laughs so much. Seems so grown up for a little baby. Good night. Love, John, Ruth, Mark, Pamela, Patty, and Peter John. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. Excuse me. If this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, photographs, uh, and fa uh, family movies and videos, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. Uh, you might consider checking out, excuse me again, our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've, we've made 691 history videos in seven areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation so we can continue making these videos. Uh, if you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, and, excuse me, are looking for a high school, you might consider Restlust Educational Center. Restlust is located on Allenby Street, also known as the Inclined Plain, uh, not far from the corner of P. Guevara and Wilson Street in San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines. At Restlust, we specialize in helping, excuse me, young people who have who have had difficulty in the larger traditional high schools. And we're more than a school where we are. We are a warm, supportive community, and we strive to be creative and innovative. And the website is restless.education, R-E-S-A-L-E-S-T. -E Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.